Looking to invest in a business taking advantage of two mega trends? Like the idea of collecting a market beating dividend growing at a double digit rate? Want to buy a stock that looks significantly undervalued? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best selling author. 30 year old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before I get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. Helps us to get the word out and grow the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. And make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video for a special news announcement. I want to tell you about a high quality stock that pays big, growing, reliable dividends. These growing dividends are funded by growing profit because this business is a media and entertainment conglomerate taking advantage of two megatrends. I want my internet access to be slower or not available at all, said nobody ever. And that's why this company, which is a major provider of high speed internet access, continues to do well. But wait. There's more. This company is also fast becoming a major player in the streaming space. It's a formidable setup where they're all over two megatrends, and that should translate into plenty of growing dividends. I personally invested in stocks just like this one on my way to going from below broke at age 27 to financially free at 33. By the way, I explain exactly how I achieved financial freedom in just six years in my early retirement blueprint. If you're interested, you can download a free copy of my early retirement blueprint using the link in the description of this video. Getting back to the stock I'll tell you about today though, perhaps best of all, it looks undervalued right now. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Why is that important? Because buying a dividend growth stock when it's undervalued should provide for a higher yield greater long-term total return potential, and reduced risk. With this in mind, I want to share with you an opportunity I recently came across in shares of Comcast Corporation, which appear to be trading at a significant discount today. Comcast Corporation stock ticker CMCSA is a media and entertainment conglomerate with interest in cable, broadcasting, film, streaming, live entertainment, and theme parks. Founded in 1963, Comcast is now a $236 billion by market cap media monster that employs nearly 170,000 people. The company reports operations across three primary segments. Cable communications, 57% of fiscal year 2020 revenue, NBC Universal, 26%, and Sky, 17%. Cable communications provides 20 million cable video connections, 31 million high-speed internet connections, connections and 11 million voice services connections. NBC Universal is comprised of several leading cable networks, two broadcast networks, the Peacock Streaming Service, owned and operated TV stations, regional sports networks, a major film studio, and Universal theme parks. Sky is a major European satellite television broadcaster. Comcast reports insignificant revenue from their corporate and other segment. Other business interests primarily consist of the operations of Comcast Spectacor, which owns the Philadelphia Flyers and the Wells Fargo Center Arena in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Comcast is a perfect example of a stodgy old school company reinventing itself in order to better compete in a new business landscape. The traditional cable video bundle is slowly dying. However, Comcast is very much not dying. To the contrary, they're growing. First, there's the connectivity theme playing out here. As one of the largest broadband providers in the United States, they're benefiting from the continued growth in broadband demand. Access to the internet is almost as important as access to electricity or running water at this stage. And with the work from home trend showing real legs, Comcast should see no lit up in demand for home broadband connectivity. The cord cutting headline is misleading. Consumers might be letting go of video, but they're definitely not cutting that broadband cord, which leads right to Comcast. Since Comcast typically has limited or no competition in their markets is a utility-like position they're in, except the economics are more favorable because there's less regulation. Second, there's the streaming theme. To paraphrase Thanos, a fictional character that's ironically part of a competing company's IP, consumers cannot live without content. And where does that bring them? back to Comcast. That's because of the massive trove of content they're moving over to their streaming platform, Peacock. Indeed, Peacock already has more than 50 million customers after launching less than two years ago. And it's mostly confined to the United States at this time. Going global will increase their potential customer pool by more than an order of magnitude. Basically, the company is taking advantage of two mega trends, high-speed internet access and streaming entertainment. All of this is to say, Comcast's best days are still likely ahead of it. And that bodes well for their ability to grow revenue, profit, and the dividend for many years to come. 
Already, Comcast has increased the dividend for 14 consecutive years. The 10-year dividend growth rate of 16.3% is really strong, and you're pairing that double-digit dividend growth with a market-beating yield of 2%. By the way, this yield is 20 basis points higher than its own five-year average. With a low payout ratio of only 32.2%, the dividend has plenty of room to head higher. These dividend metrics are very good. Looking at business growth, Comcast increased its revenue from $55.8 billion in fiscal year 2011 to $103.6 billion in fiscal year 2020. That's a compound annual a growth rate of 7.1%. I usually look for mid single digit top line growth from a mature business like this. Comcast exceeded my expectations here. Meantime, earnings per share rose from 75 cents to $2.28 over this period, which is a compound annual growth rate of 13.2%. Super impressive. Despite all of the hysteria over cord cutting, Comcast has produced outstanding numbers. And we can see now where all of that heady dividend growth has come from. It's been supported by hefty earnings per share growth. It's worth noting that a 17% reduction in the outstanding share count over the last decade helped to propel a lot of this excess bottom line growth. Looking forward, CFRA forecasts that Comcast will compound its earnings per share at an annual rate of 14% over the next three years. Seeing as how this lines up well with what Comcast actually produced over the last 10 years, CFRA is basically looking at a continuation of the status quo over the next few years. CFRA specifically highlights Comcast's margin expansion via, and I quote, favorable mixed shifts to high margin connectivity businesses, unquote, buybacks, and a, and again I quote, a firming recovery path for its advertising, TV, film content, and theme parks businesses, unquote. I concur with CFRA here. There's no reason for me not to. Comcast's most recent quarter showed 33.8% year-over-year growth in adjusted earnings per share. Simply put, the company keeps putting up the numbers. With the payout ratio being so low, shareholders would be right to expect more double-digit dividend growth for the foreseeable future, but I would expect that to moderate somewhat when looking out past the next five to 10 years. Moving over to the balance sheet, the company maintains an okay financial position. The long-term debt to equity ratio is 1.1, while the interest coverage ratio is over four. The balance sheet is clearly the weakest part of the business. They're certainly not in dire straits, but there is room for improvement here. Profitability is robust. Over the last five years, the firm has averaged annual net margin of 14.6% and annual return on equity of 20.1%. Comcast is operating at a very high level and the business is protected by durable competitive advantages that include large economies of scale, high barriers to entry, and the ability to operate as a local monopoly in many markets. Of course, there are risks to consider. Regulation, litigation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. Regulation is a rising issue in this industry, but Comcast benefits from limited or even no competition across local markets. While the cord cutting phenomenon appears to be overblown, cable video disconnections do hurt the company disproportionately. This affects them both on the cable video side via distribution, as well as the cable network side via production. Less consumers watching traditional cable television networks is a double whammy for Comcast. Comcast also faces technological obsolescence risk. If a better and or cheaper internet access can be scaled by a competitor, this would greatly impact the business model. 5G wireless options from the telecom operators could be such a threat. I see the balance sheet as a risk. The indebtedness limits their future flexibility. Finally, theme parks are being directly impacted by the pandemic, but this is more of a short-term issue. It is important to be mindful of these risks, but the business could still be a stellar long-term investment. With the stock nearly 20% off of its 52-week high, the valuation only serves to make the long-term investment case that much more compelling. The stock's price earnings ratio is 16.2. That's noticeably low in this market. It's also slightly lower than the stock's own five-year average price earnings ratio of 16.3. And the yield, as noted earlier, is higher than its own recent historical average. I valued shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in a 10% discount rate and a long-term dividend growth rate of 8%. That dividend growth rate is as high as I go, so I'm giving the company the benefit of the doubt, but I think Comcast deserves it. Their long-term earnings per share growth rate and near-term earnings per share growth forecast are both much higher than this. And the company's demonstrated long-term dividend growth rate is well into the double-digit range. Plus, the payout ratio is still rather low. If anything, Comcast will likely grow the dividend at a rate that exceeds my mark for the foreseeable future. I would then assume Assume a moderation when going past five to 10 years out. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $54. The reason I use a dividend discount model analysis is because the business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value of money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. 
I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates Comcast as a four-star stock with a fair value estimate of $60. CFRA rates Comcast as a four-star buy with a 12-month target price of $60. I came in low this time around, which surprises me. Averaging the three numbers out gives us a final valuation of $58, which would indicate the stock is possibly 15% undervalued. Here's the bottom line, guys. Comcast Corporation is a media and entertainment conglomerate operating at a very high level while taking advantage of two mega trends with a market beating yield, double digit dividend growth, a low payout ratio, nearly 15 consecutive years of dividend increases, and the potential that shares are 15% undervalued. Dividend growth investors would be wise to consider adding the stock to their portfolios for the long term. And now for a special news announcement. Microsoft Corporation stock ticker MSFT just announced that they're buying Activision Blizzard Inc. in a deal valued at nearly $69 billion. Microsoft noted the future of the metaverse when discussing its rational for the acquisition. Well, that lines up pretty well with a video we just put out where I highlighted Microsoft as one of my top picks for long-term dividend growth investors looking to invest in the upcoming metaverse. Looks like Microsoft is jumping in with both feet here. If you're not already a Microsoft shareholder, it might be time to think about changing that. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did, and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six figure portfolio, which I call the fire fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early thirties. I've made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon. And I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell stock. I put my money where my mouth is and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who have been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time.